Yes, it's well, it's Wednesday. There's so much new information about the HPV coming out right now, how it's transmitted, who's at risk. Do kids need to be vaccinated for HPV? There's so much in here I had no idea. Dr. Alyssa Dweck is the author of a new book, The A to the Z for Your V. Say that again. Uh, the V girls were talking. And guys. To the Z and guys, to by the, the way, guys care more about the V than the girls. Anyway, a full time practicing OBGYN. She's here to, with new things you need to know and answers to the important questions that really people are afraid to All ask. Right, let's start with uh, the new things we need to know. First, the newest vaccine for HPV protects against nine common strains of the virus. First of all, good morning. Nice to have you here. Good morning. One of the confusing things about HPV is that when there was a lot of information coming out a few years ago, people thought it was one thing. Right. It's many things, right? Right. Well, did you know that there are actually over 150 strains of right. the HPV virus? And some people who are opposed to vaccination use that as an argument. Well, look, you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion. I think it's amazing to think about the vaccination that covers nine strains of HPV as an anti-cancer vaccine. Mm -hmm. Because after all, it does cover nine strains of HPV, many of which are cancer causing, both for cervical cancer, penile cancer, anal cancer, oral cancer. So this is important. Men and women. You Men heard that and in there. Women. So screening, I was, this surprised me. Yeah. Screening doesn't have to start until age 30 for most women, unless there's an indication you need it earlier. But I was thinking when you're sexually active, you begin this. Right. So. Actually, this is a misconception, and I'd like to clear it up. We typically check pap smears in women 21 years old and older every three years. But the thought is, is if that they have HPV, they're going to clear it so quickly on their own, it's not necessary to screen them. It's the women 30 and older who are at highest risk for cancer that we want to actually screen for the virus and the pap smear at the same time. Now, you can have, and many women, I guess men, have HPV men yes. too. for many, men many, too. many years. Yes. In fact, it's the most common STI in the United States. But we don't know we have it. You may not know you have it. Many, many people are completely asymptomatic. So some people may experience warts that they can visibly see on mm -hmm. the genital area. Other people will have no idea that they have the virus, and that's why we screen for it. And it can lie dormant for years and years. And yes, then, it can. Then, and then, then it can reactivate. The virus can reactivate after laying dormant for a long time, and it can come up under times of stress or illness something where your body's uh, on stress. This is, a, this is the alarming one for me, and this will set alarms off for everybody. HPV is transmitted from skin to skin contact. This yes. is a, you don't have to have bodily fluid deal exactly. here. Skin to skin contact. Right, well, and this is so important when it comes to prevention of transmission because while condoms, whether they're male condoms or female condoms, are really helpful for prevention, they are not going to completely prevent because think about it, they don't cover the whole genital area and they don't cover the skin. Okay, what are you supposed to do with that? You're supposed to not <laughs> panic. So the main thing is... It's short of a dental block. What are you supposed to do? Right. You do the best that you can. A condom certainly is going to help to prevent transmission. Certainly if somebody has visible symptoms, then of course you're going to take precautions. Be smart. Limit your number of sexual partners if you're concerned about this because, again, the main way for transmission is sexual contact. So you definitely recommend vaccination. I offer it and I do recommend it, but again, it's considered an optional vaccine mm -hmm. and so people have choices. Do you uh, try to influence them to do it or you just leave it to them? You know, I give them my opinion on it, which is a positive opinion. I do advocate for it. To be frank, a lot of young women come to my office and they've already been vaccinated by their pediatricians because mm -hmm. the truth is we give this before the first sexual debut. So the vaccine is usually given 11, 12, 13 before women are coming what in to see boys? me. boys? Boys are to be vaccinated boys as well. Boys are to be vaccinated. This isn't just girls. Boys right. and girls get this vaccination. Think about it. This vaccine, the one that covers nine strains of HPV, could eradicate 99% of the, the HPV strains that it covers. Okay, you can get Dr. Dweck's book now. It's out. What's it called? The Complete A to Z for your V. How long did it take you to come up with that one? Oh boy, not too long. <laughs> no, I speak okay. V. A to the Z for your V is the way I like it. A uh, to Z for your V. Coming up.